31. Which of the statements are correct based on the gas laws? One mole of ideal gas will occupy the same volume under same conditions. This is true. Density at a constant pressure is inversely proportional to temperature. So PV and RT, we can bring the V over so that we have a density over this side. Okay, mass over volume. And we can see that to, for pressure to maintain to be the same, when your temperature goes up, your density must go down. So they are inversely proportioned. So number two is also true. Volume is doubled when temperature is raised from 25 to 50. You have to be careful. The temperature T must be expressed in terms of kelvins. So 25 to 50 is not doubling of the temperature in kelvins. So this statement is not true. In which pairs do both species have the same number of unpaired p electrons? You can actually calculate um, the number of electrons or there is a shortcut which I can show you okay, using the periodic table. What you can do is you can put S1, S2 on top of group 1 and group 2. Then we have the p orbitals for group 3, p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the group. Um, zero noble gas. So these are their orbitals in the outer shell. So if we have oxygen for example O, it means that it must end with a P4 configuration. What about Cl plus? Cl starts with P5 but since it's a plus it means it loses one electron. It goes one step back to P4. So Cl plus actually is P4. We have P4 for oxygen and Cl will be P4 also. And just like that. Fluorine F. Fluorine starts with P5 and since it's F plus it goes one step back it becomes P4. Gallium starts with P1 and then it goes one step forward to become P2 because it's Ga minus. Okay. P4 and P2 both have the same unpaired electrons 1, 2, 3, 4 for P4 1, 2 for P2 so they both have two unpaired electrons so this is also correct. Phosphorus P, P3, neon plus, neon is P6, it goes back 1 to be P5. So we have P3 versus P5. Do, they do not have the same unpaired electrons. Nitrogen and phosphorus. Why is it not possible for nitrogen to be NCl5? Well, for NCl5 to be formed, you need nitrogen to have 10 outer electrons. Okay. That will not uh, be possible for those that are in period 2 and below and above. Okay. So, nitrogen will not be able to violate the octet rule. So, statement 1 is correct. It can contain maximum of 8. Nitrogen can have oxidation number of plus 5. Okay, not relevant to forming of NCl but okay, for the statement you can also see that uh, we can have N5 where we have nitrates. Okay, so this is not not true. Nitrogen is almost inert, it's not relevant here also. Okay, the main thing is we cannot expand octet for nitrogen. 34 ammonia and chlorine Ammonia behaves like a reducing agent. You can check chlorine, zero oxidation number, then becomes minus one. Chlorine is being reduced, so ammonia is a reducing agent. Ammonia becomes ammonium. It accepts a proton 
so it behaves like a base. Oxidation number of hydrogen is plus 1 before and after the reaction and doesn't change. Thirty five halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. They form hydrides, they are strong acids. They form HCl, HBr, and HI. They are strong acids, so that's true. They react with sodium hydroxide to form your oxo anions. That is also true. Your oxo anions are here. They are all p5 orbitals, so they require one more electron to fill up the p orbitals. That's also true. Thirty six sulfur dioxide becomes sulfur trioxide, and if we increase the pressure, what will be the consequence? Increasing the pressure will increase running costs. You need more expensive um, machineries, and then increasing the pressure will shift the equilibrium to the side where has there's less gas molecules. So it will shift to the right. We have more sulfur trioxide. The rate of the backward reaction increases. When pressure is increased, there will be more concentrated reactants and products. So both the forward reaction and the backward reaction will increase. What is always involved in a carbon carbon pi bond? we will have a shared pair of electrons okay, and pi bonds are formed by p orbitals sideways overlap so 1 and 2 are correct okay. these electrons are not considered delocalized they are still considered localized so statement 3 is wrong Thirty-eight involve quite a bit of calculation we have our alcohol and they say that out of the 70 grams 62 percent yield is achieved so we can actually start off with the idea that out of the 70 grams 43.4 grams of the alcohol is converted and from this 43.4 grams of alcohol we divide by the MR of the alcohol we have the moles of the alcohol that is successfully converted by ratio, we will get the same moles of the products. 43 over 43.4 over 74. I'll leave it as a fraction okay, to be more exact. So we will have 43.4 divided by 74 moles of butanone, butanoic acid, and methyl propanoic acid. Once we have that, we multiply by their MR. 72, 88 and 88 to see whether we should get this mass right? in this case multiplying the moles with the MR gives us the correct respective masses Thirty nine. this compound we have a double bond and we have an aldehyde here Which reagents will react with this compound or this molecule? Sodium, there's nothing for sodium to react with. Sodium boron hydride will reduce your aldehyde to an alcohol. Phalanx reagent will react with your aldehyde to form a brick red precipitate. So only 2 and 3 are correct. Forty. How can we get ethyl amine using bromoethane? So we have your bromoethane, your ammonia. Our ammonia will be our nucleophile. Okay. If we use excess of it, it will react to form our ethyl amine in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So first one is correct. The second one, aqueous ammonia will not react. Bromoethane with aqueous ammonium chloride will also not react. 
the ammonia basically became becomes ammonium here okay, and it would not be a successful nuclear file.